Peter James is joining us today on the Church Front Show, all the way from Australia. We've brought Australia to the end of our table right here in the head, Church Front headquarters. It's amazing what technology can do. He looks like he's only like two feet from us, but he's like 12,000 miles from us. I don't know, something, yeah. something like that. So, Peter, welcome. Great to have you. Thank you. Great to be here. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you at? Where are you currently serving in worship ministry? Yeah, so I've got a bit of a story, which I don't want to bore you too much with. Um, so currently... Oh, we I'm like stories. We like, sto- we like stories. <laughs> you, like, you like long ones? Yeah. Okay, yes, cool. yes. Um, so yeah, I moved to Sydney in 2000 um, to do college, actually, Hilton College. Um, stuck around, got involved with a team, started getting involved with a youth group and everything, and eventually Hillsong United, Hillsong Worship. Um, so spent 20 years touring with Hillsong Worship and Hillsong United, um, done like, I think it's something like 40 Hillsong albums over the years, shows my age. Um, uh, yeah, so I've done all that, but now I'm 100% self-employed. A lot of what I do is online producing uh, with clients around the world. Um, obviously still heavily involved with Hillsong Church, serve on the weekends, uh, still get involved in albums and things like that. Um, but self-employed, produce patches, do that kind of thing. I'm on the beta testing team for Spectrasonics, so I've had the privilege of having my patches included in Omnisphere 2's factory preset, so that's kind of part of what I do. Um, and also, yeah, so a lot of what I do now is sound design. So it's kind of crazy. Um, been hearing my stuff pop up, movie and TV series. Um, heard it on The Walking Dead uh, recently, one of my sounds. Um, the Bachelor, yeah, The Bachelorette. Uh, the Bachelor. Yeah, I know my wife makes me watch that kind of stuff. So I've heard it on, on those two programs and a bunch of other movies and things. So yeah, a lot of what I do these days is sound designing. Um, and that's why I've got all my uh, patches and stuff up on multi-tracks. But yeah, yeah, that's the so short I, word up to the. Yeah, so are you located um, near the the Hills campus in Sydney area in the Sydney area? Where are you at? Yeah, so I'm about ten fifteen minutes drive from the main Hills campus um, here in Sydney. So yeah, it's just around the corner. Okay, cool. Someday we want to visit there and do okay. a tech tour video. We were, I think, I connected with one of the production team leads there right before the pandemic um and obviously we like we're like hey we get we, we want to do this but then it's like it was like oh we gotta put this on pause who knows when we're even allowed to travel to australia but someday man we're gonna yeah, do this in person and 100% meet up. But, do it yeah, for sure but, so 20 some odd years touring with united hillsong worship i there's a good chance then i probably went to like if, if, if it was in, um, yeah, well, I mean, when did you, when did you stop doing that? Or like, when did you take a break from touring and stuff? Um, I think the last tour was about six years ago. Um, okay. I've traveled doing, um, other ministry stuff, but, mm-hmm. uh, not with Hillsong United. So I think it was about six years ago that I, um, pulled back from the touring thing, got married, that kind of thing. And. Yeah, done about fifteen or sixteen years of it, so I was like, "Cool, give the yep. young guys a go." So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's a good chance then, if it was like what before twenty sixteen or twenty fifteen, and if it was like a one of your worship nights here in the states, because I think I went to one. My first one, I my first Hillsong United event I went to was like twenty ten. It was actually like the first date with my wife. Nice. Maybe you were there. It was in St. Yeah, Louis. Nice. Do you remember it? Were you in St. Louis in twenty ten? <laughs> I would have been probably multiple times, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was on that one, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. Have you, Adam, have you been yeah. to? Yeah, I saw, I think it was mm, 2012, maybe, a state fair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah. I think that was the year, 2012 or 2014. Yep. Hillsong Live. So you're still, nice. you're still, you're, you're, so you're volunteering on the weekends now. Cause I've seen on your Facebook yep. page, 
you kind of post like some pictures and stuff like that. So how often are you um, on the team? And yeah, what like what's what's it like, man? I mean, people, everybody, we get to watch you guys, but like, what's it like being playing keys for for Hillsong Worship? That's it's awesome. Yeah, um, I'm on pretty much most Sundays. I'm rostered on either the morning or the night. Um, so yeah, we're just like any other church. Great, great team over here. Um, just doing our bit for to help build the local church. Um, yeah, it's it's great. Bunch of great musicians. Um, great songwriters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good friends. I, it's just like a local church. Like a lot yeah. of people see um, the DVDs and everything and go, "Wow, that's crazy!" But yeah, we're just local musicians giving it a go, and we get to do our overdubs uh and post to make us sound a lot better than we really are but yeah <laughs> we're just we're just uh, um a local church trying to do our you, thing, you so. do all the do all the overdubs so maybe the the congregation mics are like the only original recording or something like that 100 <laughs> percent, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that but yeah. uh it's I actually song live but not yeah really. <laughs> the congregation live and then yeah. no it's funny i actually know of a church that for their for a live worship album for their they had to. They have. A, they had to overdub the congregation mics. So they had to. They pulled. Oh, that's they awesome. pulled crowd. They pulled crowd mics from a Mets game. So it was like it's. It's funny if you kind of like and when that's you know cheating. that that's when cheating. you know that and you listen to it. It's like it's like oh that that does sound a little different because I was there that night. But anyway, mm. um, yeah. Are you on the weekends? So do you um, from from your position in the team? Are you? A music director mm. are you able to focus just on keys and synths mm. um and then i also want to have you kind of give us like maybe a rig rundown as well adam could probably pull up yeah, a picture cool. of it but yeah. yeah um so i have done MDing in the past but personally i like focusing more on just the key side of things mm-hmm. um so i don't do a lot of MDing. um there was a stage where i used to fire tracks too from stage but now we've got a separate team that fires tracks off stage um so it's a lot easier for us keys players now so yeah i just basically play keys we usually have two keys players and so i'm either playing more piano based stuff um piano roads um or second keys depending on what i'm rostered on which is more pads ambiences um Mm -hmm. yeah that kind of thing so not doing a lot of emding these days which i'm kind of grateful for Mm-hmm. The less stress and more chance to focus on, yeah, playing. So. Who d- who does that? Like, yeah. So in your setup, do you like I and maybe there's a video out there we could all watch that breaks it down. But on a typical Sunday, like, tell us about yeah. some of like who's running what. So you're you're able to focus on keys and and synths and the ambient sounds. What about like firing tracks? Do you guys have a completely separate tracks rig like that? Someone else is just dedicated to running. Yeah, so for the longest time, it was Keys 2 that would fire the tracks. Um, but probably, oh, I don't know, for about six months to a year ago, we swapped to um, one or two guys' side of stage would be firing tracks. And the good thing about that is we can really customize our songs and just jump from any section to any section because we're running Ableton. Um and so their focus is just 100% tracks. So mm-hmm. anytime the MD or worship leader can just go, okay, let's do another chorus or let if they stuff the um, intro, they can keep looping the intro. And, you know, they, they're just not having the keys player having to do that just makes it a lot more flexible with what we can do with tracks. Um, the tracks mm-hmm. can fire like ambient pad drones as well. And I think mm-hmm. even JP will um chuck in when we're running tracks you can put in like a tambourine loop and just other little things so more like a dj i guess than pull that up go to his facebook page yeah go to go it's right i think i saw this on your go to facebook go to um the your actual um oh it's gonna do two-factor account on my phone we're just like (laughs) we're just great here i'm gonna pull up uh let you log into that real quick Yes, Adam can log into my Facebook. Oh boy, Keys and then the there we go. Save browser. You should be able to get in because I think yeah, I saw some pictures. I follow you on Facebook, which everybody else should as well. Um, and then just search um, uh, Peter James there, and you'll yeah. be able to find it. But because I want you to, I think wasn't there a picture of that tracks rig a couple weeks ago? You shared one. Yeah, 
I did check it out. I'm pulling it up now to see if it looks like a mind. Um, it's right there. No, Peter James Productions. Second, no. You got to go to the yep. business page. Windows open. Yep. Nice. There we go. Now we can start scrolling down, and you can throw that up for everybody else to oh, see. Yeah. Oh, he's even got the gear we'll talk about later, too, on yep. there. So. This guy here. All right. We've got it coming up here. So... Then people can kind of visually see a little bit more about the this this setup here. So scroll down a little bit. Just keep scrolling down the feed, Adam. And then oh. I think it was. You no, know, we should honestly. I kind yeah, of want I'm right there, right? There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's make that one. make it bigger. There we go. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Like what computers and what's so, the setup? Yep. Yeah, so that left of stage, you can just see the keyboard riser above. So it's mm -hmm. it's right next to the monitor monitor desk. Um, that's a monitor, obviously, on the far left-hand side, there's the um, laptop. Um, I'm not 100% sure how they've got it all set up because <laughs> I've never actually run the uh, side of the stage rig. Um, mm -hmm. But they've got see that little mini keyboard. Um, they have that as a basically MIDI controller. So they've got labels on every single key, like start, stop, and they can trigger songs and ambient pads from hitting those um Keys there. Um, there's also an iPad, which is you can see it set up to do mixing control and everything. Not the greatest picture. I might have to get another one where you can actually see the labels and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's basically the setup. Um, and you can also see a little talkback mic, so they can talk to the MD um, and communicate they need to during the service or during rehearsal or whatever. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's the side of stage. Ableton. Yeah, nice. Tracks rig. Yeah. Yeah, cuz that so the iPad is a is one of those like um apps that can control Ableton over MIDI, is that what it is? Yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure that's what it is. Yep. So it's got touch, I think you can see the volume kind of touchable or touch OC. One of those two. Yeah. We mess with it yep. before. Yep. That's great. Someone they're using they got Ultimate Ears headphones. What do you use for in-ear headphones? So I've got them on at the moment. Not sure if you can see them, um, but yeah, I use 64. Um, I think okay. I've got the A12s at the moment. So yeah, the guys uh, have been really good to me, and I've picked these up. I love them. Absolutely love them. The whole United's on uh, 64 ears as well at the moment. Um, mm. And so we, I think most of our band are either 64 or UE. Is for the longest time we're on UE sevens with United as well, and then. We started using 64s uh, more recently, so yeah. Nice, nice. Let's do. Is there a picture of of uh, your actual keyboard rig now that we can check out? Maybe on. Uh, your it Facebook should be on my Instagram. Or something. Or Instagram. Okay. Yeah, every second picture is a picture of me on stage. <laughs> this. So. Yeah, I don't. Can we even pull up the desktop version of this? Like you see in pictures of my friend's cats. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Peter James. There we go. Okay. My mic's slowly dropping. So let me fix uh -oh. this. Okay. There we go. Which one? That one in the middle there, maybe? Is that the... You got the Nord. Yeah. Wait, that this... doesn't show. No, so... Um... Usually, I don't bring my analog keyboard to church. Uh, sometimes I do. There's one where I've got my Prophet 5. Uh, but for conferences, mm -hmm. I'll bring like the extended version of my rig where I'll bring like my OB6 or Prophet 5 and Big Sky. I run my um, analog keyboards through a Big Sky. Um, nice. Yeah, I got the Apollo Twin. I even took those classic APIs to church once to see what it would sound like through them. I love those pretties. Uh, that's what I'm feeling. Nice. Cool. Feeling, yeah, where's there yeah. where's there a picture that kind of shows us like kind of the whole your Sunday? Uh, it might be back because Sunday. because of COVID, we haven't had mm. um, Hillsong conference in a while, so it might be back. Okay. But are you um, using? I see you have like you had a Nord. Like it looks, seems like the Nord is kind of your. Are you using like? that as a midi controller or are you actually using the sounds in it like what's what's the role yeah so so there's two keys at church the one when i'm on um the what is usually piano when i'm playing and i'm on the yamaha is usually second keys um yeah you can see there i've got my ob6 um 
Nord, um, Apollo Twin uh, at the bottom laptop. Um, and what you probably don't see in the picture is the big sky. So I'll run my OV6 out into my big sky, out of my big sky into my Apollo Twin inputs. Um, okay. And then What's a big sky? My, is that, is um, that a reverb? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, Strymon. Okay. Yep. And then I'm running main stage as well into my Apollo Twin. And the great thing about the Apollo Twin is you can mix in the audio without it going back into computer and then back out. So um, the OB6 Big Sky combination doesn't add, it doesn't get latency added to it because it goes into the mixer and then straight out. Um, whereas I know some interfaces you have to route it in and then into computer and then mm -hmm. back out, which adds latency. So it's basically can be used like a uh, mixer and then front of house just gets left and right. So I mix it myself, which is they love that. They don't want to have like 100 different keys oh. lines are having to yeah. fumble around with. So that's kind of how I run my rig. Okay. Um, yeah, week you to need... week. Sometimes I don't have the OB6 and Big Sky, um, but for conferences I'll bring out, yeah, some extra awesome. gear. Yeah. So your main stage is your primary um, key. Like, so you've got, you've got the, the, the noise, the, you got the sounds from the keyboards themselves and then main stage and that's it. That's like your primary DAW. Yeah. Cool. So the, the Nord, yep. Nord is hundred percent MIDI controller. Same with the Yamaha when you see me um, on that. And so everything is coming from uh, main stage. There was a stage oh, okay. touring where I would have, the keyboard and the computer kind of simultaneously um, going into a mixer just in case. There were days where computers weren't as stable and weren't as fast and I would always have a backup, but these days I've got it where it's really solid and never have a crash or never have any problems. Yeah. So I don't have to have that backup line of keys. But I suggest if you're starting to use a computer, 100%, just have that backup. Uh, if you're using a Nord, plug the Nord in as well. And then if the, something goes wrong with the computer, just pull the volume. That's what mm -hmm. I did for the longest time, just uh, out of safety, I guess. Like you had the, the Nord plugged into the UAD and then the volume down. So if something went wrong, you could just... That's what... 100%. That's what I used to do. So, yeah, yeah just okay. basically plugged in and running. And at any time, I could just bring the volume up on the keyboard and... Uh, get the inbuilt sounds. Yep, yep. The UA, the UAD uh, or the Apollo, we have like what do we have? The arrows. The arrows, the smaller yeah. ones. So mm -hmm. does that? So you're cool. just? Do you have the 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 universal audio like mixing control software up the whole time too to to do that mixing? Yeah, I do. Sometimes I might um, put an EQ on my analog keyboard or do something inside the door because they can run um, their software via the um, actual hardware. So it doesn't have to go be routed into the computer, put effects on and then out, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I do have the console ready and I can put delays and effects from the UAD um, if I want. So when I use my Profit 5 just recently, uh, the Profit 5 is a mono keyboard. Um, some people pull that up? don't know that. Um, so when I use a Profit 5, I actually used a uh, ping pong delay from UAD um, in that mm. as well um, to make it a stereo um, out. Nice. So that's really handy having the polo with the effects and stuff built into the hardware. Yeah. I know so little that's about analog analog keyboards like this. So what what are the sounds that we're hearing like from this type of like these are these the the pads or these are the synth leads? Like what are we hearing from this type of device? Yeah, so it does a bunch of different things. Um, I was mainly using it for pads. Um, a little bit of history. Uh, if you know the song Oceans by Hillsong United, the main pad sound from that uh, song was actually, it's from Omnisphere. It was a Prophet 5 sample um, sampled through a role of Dimension D. So that's basically the sound of Oceans, the main warm pad on Oceans. Um, and so, um, I've been hearing the profit sound and all my kind of software for years and years and years. And it was one of my favorite kind of analog keyboards. So when they brought out the new version of 
this thing uh 100 wanted to grab it raw tone in this thing is amazing it does yeah mm. amazing pads amazing leads amazing bases um so many bands over the years have used this um radiohead one of my favorite um secular alternative mm. bands used it um everything in its right place by radiohead i think it was a kid a album um that whole kind of keyboard intro thing is a profit five um but yeah that's what it is um what are the mechanics of those yeah. those keyboards like that like is it because it there's some sort of computer inside still right or is it real when they say analog like what's actually making the yeah. noises <laughs> like so the signal path is 100 percent analog the only thing okay. digital about the profit five is basically its ability to save all your analog presets um i know that ob6 has um inbuilt effects that you can turn on and off but profit five is 100 percent analog signal chain so analog low pass filter all your vcos all your yeah i don't know what all the technical terms are for everything but yeah, it creates sound through voltage um, rather than through ones and zeros, I guess, um, yeah. transistors and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. like your analog guitar very... pedals and stuff like that, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. wasn't it? I so think it was a profit that was the um, the main sounds that were coming for Stranger Things, the Stranger Things intro. Do you know that? Yeah, nice. It, you're probably yeah. right. I haven't looked into what was used for that, but hmm. yeah, probably a Moog Model D and a Prophet and a few other ones. But yeah, That's awesome. yeah, love my analog. Yeah. Um, so, what's your process yeah. look like? Because you make you're making a ton of patches for um, that they you, people can grab on Multi Tracks website. Um, pull the pull that yep. website up too. Like, what's that process look like? Because you're using your analog like gear like this right and then you're and then you capture that somehow like i'm really very also unfamiliar with the whole world of how you actually make patches yeah so up on multi-tracks obviously i've got all the sounds that i've used on all the hills united and hills worship albums over the years um but recently with getting this all this analog gear um i don't always want to be carting around my analog gear like i said every sunday um and so i make samples of my analog gear so i can use it on my laptop um mm, okay uh that's that's a Rhodes version Rhodes bundle that's released um but yeah i basically sample things how i want to use it so week to week i don't want to have to have my prop five and my ob6 the great thing about analog is a tone but it's also a bit temperamental like tuning wise it'll go out of tune if the temperature changes in the room um, the Prophet 5, like I said, is a mono keyboard. Um, and so I double sampled the Prophet 5 to make it stereo. Um, so you can double sample it because it's analog. It doesn't give you phasing issues if you um, sample it twice. You can double track it if you're doing an album or anything like that. It also has this kind of vintage knob, which uh, makes the timing a little bit looser the envelopes a little bit looser the um, tuning a little bit looser and so depending on how much of that um, randomness you add in when you double track it it'll make it either super wide or not quite as wide so you can really customize kind of how wide you want it um yeah and so i don't want to have to have my ob6 and my profit five and they're not a uh, full polyphony so the profit five obviously the number five says how many notes polyphony you've got but a lot of the time I want to play like four notes in the top end and double octave, which is six notes. And I can't really do that with the profit five. Um, and so creating sampled versions, one, it makes it stereo for me Two, I can run it through effects like the big sky. Um, so I've got that added on. It doesn't go out of tune live. Um, and yeah, I just have, more notes to play and I can stack it with my OB6 uh, samples and everything. So I've still got the really nice tone of the um, analog gear, but not the temperamentalness of it, I guess, live, which, yeah. And obviously if you're touring, you don't really have to tour with a bunch of analog keyboards as well. Um, yeah, and I like to leave my Profit 5 at home just because it's my little baby. I don't 
want to have to drag it out and you know mm -hmm. get it nicked up or whatever so yeah that's kind of my approach um and yeah. why i sample it so i can use it live yeah in, in like looking at your patches we've got on the sphere we've got main stage patches um why would a worship key keyboard player like let's say they've been using main stage because that's that seems to be a more mm -hmm. kind of accessible um affordable software to get started with like when do they get to the point where they they would want need to use omnisphere well yeah main stage is like 30 dollar piece of software it's super cheap it comes with crazy amounts of software um additional samples and everything so starting with that is the best choice on the sphere just it's just expanding your basically cat uh, what do you call it a catalog of sounds um mm. you don't need on the sphere um you don't need extra samples but if you want i don't know if you want better sounds i'm always looking for new better sounds um then that's the next step you go to to yeah getting more sounds like the stuff inside main stage is good but it's not the greatest and the good thing about buying external software is you can really customize it you can go okay i don't really like the main stage piano sound so let's go out and buy a really nice piano sound or i uh, feel like main stage is lacking atmospheres and pads and kind of yeah those kind of things so might go out and get atmosphere to cover your pads and atmospheres um, and a lot of the patches that i have used on um, hillsong united and hillsong worship albums uh, a lot of them come from omnisphere um, even the other guys like matt tenney and autumn uh, she owns and he owns omnisphere and a lot of the sounds you're hearing on albums um, come from omnisphere and then more of more recent years um Hillsong United stuff will move more to analog stuff. They won't, um, or we, we won't tour without analog gear, but the recordings uh, were created with a whole lot of analog gear. Um, and so that's why I'm starting to like sample all my analog gear and do quality samples. I know a lot of companies sample analog gear and do their thing. Um, and they might sample every third note or they might, um, sample of your five notes and time stretch them and everything but i want to do like full quality samples every single note double sample it um and put little features in there like a vintage knob so you can get randomized pitch variation and yeah so i'm just sampling them the way that i want to use them because i haven't found uh those samples available online like even for example even the omnisphere um the main pad that was used was an Omnisphere Profit 5 sample. So having the real thing in front of me, I was like, okay, I'm going to create like a two gigabyte full version of the um, Oceans pad with my real Profit 5 through some classic API gear and through a Dimension D, um, mm -hmm. Roland Dimension D thing, just to give you, yeah, full quality sample. So that's me. I like to geek out. I like to sample stuff. I like getting the best that I can for my live rig. So what's your most popular, what's like the most popular patch that's downloaded on multi-tracks? Um, so the most po popular one is actually an ambient pad. So mm. it's my OB6 ambient pads. And the reason why it's most popular thing is it's not just for keyboard players because churches can use it as an ambient, like 151, um drone yep. um for transitions between songs mm. um that's the presets for the ob6 but if you go to bundle no actually go to the left go to sounds uh oh i lost it uh if you go up to the top there's oh, sounds click on the top. Get oh, sounds. Yeah, yeah sounds yeah and go to ambient pads yeah that'll bring it up It should be trying OB to get ambient. to all. There we go. Yep. It seems to be the most popular one because you can use it on playback. If you're not using Ableton but using playback for your church services, this will just show up in your playback account if you get it. Um, 
it's the keyboard I've used on heaps of church albums, and I ran it through my big sky and created um, twelve minute long ambient um, OB6. Mm. Um, as yeah. you can see, it's for Ableton. For it's got Wave M4. It is a main stage version. Um, so yeah, that seems to be one of my popular products at the moment. Nice, nice. Love them pads. Mm -hmm. Gotta gotta have them. Gotta have them. So. so Oh, go ahead. I was going to ask when you are doing like, uh, you know, you're doing a tour, you're doing a live thing. Like, how much of, like, are you trying to do from your keyboards so that you don't have to use backtracks? Or I guess, do you guys even use like tracks? Yeah, like I've changed over the years. Uh, all the older albums, we would not use tracks. Um, we'd do it all live, and then if we need additional layers to fill it out, we'd do that in post. Um, but some recent albums we've been using tracks for them um just to fill it out for the room i guess for people worshiping in the room obviously things like strings are a little bit hard to create live with all the spill from crowd and drums and everything else so we'll go and record our strings in the studio get them nice um clean string recordings and add that to a track we might have some kind of ambient keys layers that aren't the main leads, but just something kind of ambient in there to fill it out for live. So yeah, old albums, no, we did it all live and then added additional stuff in post, but newer albums, we'll put a few tracks, nothing crazy, but just like I said, strings and things that are a little bit harder to capture on a night. Um, yeah, on the tracks and run them live while we're recording. So you do like all the sequency kind of stuff live too? Yeah, we most of the ARP stuff we try not to do live, but just because of syncing problems and trying to sync it up so it perfectly lands on the beat. So most of that stuff, yeah, we'll have on a track. Um, I try to attempt it sometimes, but <laughs> we were playing live, but it's one of those hit and miss things that's safer to leave on a track, I think. And we're not sending... Um, midi clock around to everyone so it's not going to sync out it's just user error um that'll put it off um doing it live so yeah most of the kind of rp stuff and sync stuff will leave on tracks as well nice i'm looking at your instagram again you guys had this was a few like a week ago you guys were in the a recording studio recording instrument parts for hillsong worship where is this like a is like yeah. is this like the church's studio or something like at the hills campus or where? Yeah, is that? so so just recently we built a really nice um, studio at our main hills campus. Um, we used to pay to go to another studio in the city all the time, which was great. But it worked out cheaper, obviously budget wise, to build our own studio and not have to pay someone else to use it. With the amount of albums that we're producing, um, we decided to put a bunch of money into building our own studio so we've got that on site at our hills campus mm. and yeah it's amazing i love the studio the, um, yeah it looks looks awesome room you can sound scroll. Is, is really good that's the yeah. drum kind of section um that's the main room and we we're just yeah. doing you can see the camera above the keyboard there we we're just doing instrument parts for i think it was fresh wind which is the newest one from hillsong worship um and we did man of sorrows i think that those are the two that i did anyway um and that little instrument parts and that should be released soon um i yeah. think it's going to go up on youtube so people can just go and watch that um yeah that, that's the control room obviously the other picture yeah um, barefoot speakers and neve console um it's also a bunch of hardware um mm. analog hardware yeah which you can't see um 1176s and all your kind of pre's and everything's so, yeah jealous that's, that's a nice studio <laughs> man um that you said that how new is that studio just in the past year or so um it's a few years old yeah okay. but for the longest time we didn't have uh the studio so it's, it's pretty new you know maybe i do recall seeing simon some, coves um, yeah i think i've seen seen some music videos or something recorded there on youtube looks now it looks familiar yeah it's awesome and okay. we can change it up obviously to make it suit the recording so we closed that room off uh to make a drum room but those glass kind of door things 
uh, retract it. You can make it into a big room if you want to. So yeah, yeah. You've been working on a um, or you made a a broadcast mix template, right? That's on multi tracks as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you so especially with the whole pandemic thing, we thought it was cool to bring out something like that. So yeah, partner yeah. with um, one of the Hillsong. Uh, uh, main mix engineers and we work together where do we to, find it on um, the website it. it's oh, that's a good question <laughs> let me go just, to it can um, you just search i'll mix pull it up template, myself maybe yeah you should have to just a oh, mixing template oh yep. it might be under templates if you go there's a little tab at the top if you're on the right page oh. yeah we found it cool and then you got it for logic pro tools ableton Yep. Yeah, Stock that's plugins. those are the three main. I'll ones. Stock so yeah, we well. wanted something. Yeah. yeah, it's two versions. There's one where you don't need any third-party plugins. It'll just use the stock standard Pro Tools, Ableton, and Logic plugins. And then there's kind of a Pro version which uses third-party plugins um, on top of that. So we wanted to have something where anyone without budget for extra plugins could still get in. Um, and then one with third-party plugins. I think they should be all labeled there somewhere. Um, but yeah, yeah kinda... and the great thing about it, um, the guy that helped me out, Phil Blackbourne, um, he wrote a massive, uh, I think it's like a two-page um, approach to mixing as well. So mm. he talks you through his um, thoughts um, on mixing and what he looks for. Um, but the great thing about this is It'll give you an amazing starting point um, without you having to know anything about mixing. Um, mm. And we've got a tutorial that shows you how to set up the gain stage. Because um, I, I think sometimes if you get a mixing template and it doesn't have gain staging, you're never going to know how it's going to hit the compressors and how it's going to um, sound. So once you set up the gain staging, it basically mixes itself. Um, mm. So yeah. It's a good little tool for churches and stuff. Uh, people who want to get a good mixed um, yeah. starting point. How how is um how is the the church you got? How are you guys mixing Sundays right now? When we listen online, do you know that that setup? Yeah, I don't know all the gear, but we're obviously running uh, to front of house, but we have a separate broadcast mix. Um, so he's sitting in a broadcast room and mixing specifically for the live stream and specifically for TV. Mm. Um, and so we have those separate. We're not just taking the front of house mix in the room and sending that out to everyone. We have a separate person um, dedicated to the broadcast mix. So yeah, do yeah. you know like are they are they using are they mixing mostly in a box with like Pro Tools? Are they using a combination like or like an actual another console? Oh, that's they're using another console, a uh, digital console. I'm not sure what else they're using. Should probably go in there and grab a few photos and stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know the details. I've been in there a few times, but I haven't taken note yeah. of what gear they're actually using. So yeah, that's why we need to go there sometime. Yeah, <laughs> we'll bring we'll bring our our cameras, take all the videos and pictures there. But awesome. that'll be that'll be a blast. Um, Man, are there? Um, I'm looking at the chat here. Any questions that stand out to you, Adam? Did you see anything that folks? Had? Uh, your wife said that it was your first date. Yep. Yep. That's good. My wife's listening. Thanks, Kaylee. <laughs> and a lot of people saying Peter's the man. Yep. Lots <laughs> of positive feedback there. Organ synths are beautiful. Then someone says ambient pad player. Yeah, it looks like they've already. Yeah, people are already using those products, loving them. So, cool. the The good thing about Playback too is it's a free app, so you don't have to subscribe to anything. You don't have to pay for anything. Um, you could use the ambient pads inside Playback, absolutely free. So if you're just going, oh, I want to play these ambient pads, but I don't want to pay for a subscription based thing, or I don't want to pay for Ableton, or I don't want to pay um, for anything like that, you can just download. Playback for free, check Zambia. Well, you don't even have to put them on. If you buy them, they automatically show up in your playback account and you can uh, use them on that. Just, yeah. Yeah. If anyone's wondering. Someone, someone asked, uh, has Peter ever used playback in church before? 
I almost did, but I haven't yet. <laughs> almost did. <laughs> so hopefully, the, hopefully, exe- hopefully, hopefully, the execs at uh, Volte Tracks aren't watching this. I don't think yeah, they're they like do. cut, cut, cut the feed, cut the feed. Um, <laughs> no, this was for um, a trip to the Philippines, and the plan was I was going to use playback to, um, and I can't remember what happened, but ended up last minute having to because i don't think they had the right connection cables or something stupid something little like that um and ended up having to run it from my laptop um but we were looking actually recently at rolling out playback into some of our extension services because we don't always have um ableton in our smaller services and obviously there's a big learning curve with ableton there's a lot of things um Mm-hmm. to learn and that can go wrong playbooks a lot more kind of user friendly um so i've just been talking with multi-tracks guys and seeing how we can start to roll that out on our smaller campuses um so yeah definitely uh thinking of rolling that out um but we've got our main ableton set up for our main hills and we've got people that are operating that but it's you probably know yourself that ableton it's a bit of a steep learning curve um to know how to do all the um like repeat sections and take yeah. out sections and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, we are looking yeah. at actually pulling yeah. that out for our smaller campuses. Nice. nice. Dude, well I'm I feel like I've man, so much information about keys and patches I've learned so far in this conversation. Do you have any other questions before we maybe seg uh, segue to a, another segment of the show here? No, I think I think we've covered a lot. Yeah. Yeah, pull up. Let's pull up some of our notes that we've got for some of our other uh, other talking points today. Here, oh, actually, I, here's the first one. This is cool that Peter's on the show today. Ableton Live 11. So speaking of Ableton, um, and I don't know, like, so are you? Are, I'm getting the sense that you're not necessarily like an Ableton like power user for a lot of your production work. Yeah, I've. I basically stay inside Logic. Um, I don't even mm-hmm. know Pro Tools that well, let alone Ableton. And I've, I've used it obviously from a point where I'll trigger tracks and that kind of thing from keys to, but I don't know the ins and outs of Ableton like a lot of other guys do. So I'm definitely not your Ableton expert by any yeah. means. Well, let's look at some of these new features because this I think this is something it'll we can all kind of nerd out over here. So. I like when I was looking at the features of yeah, see all the new features right there. I was just gonna comment first of all, like you have to have it like disgustingly messy cable set up to get a your photo <laughs> on awesome. here. Yeah. Like, I actually think I love the aesthetic of their their photography and design. Like for some reason, I don't know, whoever whoever does the video film work for Ableton, like it just looks cool. It's like I here's my here's I don't care. Just take my five hundred dollars, and I'll take your. So- I'll buy your software. It's just like it just looks definitely more uh, trendier, I guess, than than some of the other DAOs. Not that that matters, but I think I think this is the big one here. Comping, comping, yeah, that's a new thing. To that's it. more for studio. Yeah, than- yeah. I mean, Ableton is such a diverse software, like for live playback, for studio producing, writing, recording. We're using I, we like using it for broadcast mixing, um, and now like I guess the comping is cool. We never again. It's not a thing. I'm not I'm not in the studio a ton. You know, Chipper probably does the most out of us right now, but you know that's that's something I know. Logic and Pro Tools have done comping for a while. Yeah, I mean it's been on every other DAW for a long time. Yeah, but there are some interesting things though, like the the technology they put in here with um, it like. The, if I, apparently the software can follow your tempo, like as you're playing an instrument, like somehow it can, it, I think that's, yeah, tempo following. Live listens to and adjusts its tempo based on incoming audio in real time, making it a dynamic part of the band it's, um, instead of the tempo source that everyone has to follow. That's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of think for most worship teams, though, we need Not the click to keep us idea. on, we need <laughs> it on tempo. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but uh for other other creative environments you know that works well macro snapshots yeah rack improvements you you've messed around more of the rack features what's the deal there uh oh okay so i see there used to always i think just be standard eight macros um peter might know more since he's 
dug into the design of this stuff, but like as you're building presets, you use macros to basically control yep. parameters within mm. effects. So it's like instead of like digging way into the effects, it's like you have a quick knob. Yep. But um, now you can have between one and 16. So if you only need four knobs, like, oh. or if you want more, if you want 16 to control a bunch it of It used to be just expanded eight. it from eight to 16, I think. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Be unpredictable. This is this is oh. crazy. Like the the technology they're putting into this stuff. Um, set the probability that a note or a drum hit will occur, and let live generate surprising variations to your patterns that change over time. Yeah. So like uh, I think hmm. like as Peter was saying, he was recording several like say he's recording like a vintage keyboard, and he hits the note two or three times. So there's uh, you know round robin basically, mm -hmm. round robin sampling. Hmm. You can set the probability for that. Okay, as cool. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You probably don't want randomized follow actions in in your Ableton sets for worship <laughs> setups, but we use we run ours like when I when I do Ableton sets, I use arrangement view. Um, I saw you guys use session view, and I think it's great, especially if you have a dedicated person to help like jump around different parts um, of it. Um, arrangement view is kind of nice when you're the main, you know, the worship leader setting it up and you just kind of want to be able to let it play throughout the set list and hit automation totally. cues or nice, have some nice transitions kind of automatically. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff, man, it's like, I, I kind of feel bad because with Ableton, I mean, I, I use it every week now we, and we use it two ways every week. So like to run tracks and a mix for live stream, but it's still like just scratching the surface of, of what this software does. Kind of, yeah, I kind of feel like an imposter using it sometimes. Hey, you can use what works. That was it. So I don't think there's like any, I don't know. Here's a, here's a something, hopefully, maybe people are out there thinking like, oh, should I pay to upgrade to Ableton Live 11 right now if I'm a worship leader running tracks with it? I I don't really see a huge reason to. Um, I feel like the change from Ableton 9 to 10 was pretty significant and worth like the upgrade. Um, just like some of the things they changed about the UI. Um, I can't remember what the other major features were. To me, it's like, I just like the new, the UI that they have. Um, yeah. And now it's like, the, the, the UI still looks pretty much the same. I can't really tell much of a difference. Yeah, I think, I mean, we have, there's some like new reverbs. Mm. Um. Which could be cool for, you know, for the mix template stuff, like if they're if they're adding new, yeah, built-in effects and plugins to use. Yeah, I don't think that there's really enough where it's like worth updating. Like, there's a cool delay thing, but it's like just, you know, buy the Valhalla delay for fifty bucks and yeah, be in there. Yep. Ableton Live Eleven. All right, what else do we got that's new? Let's see. Oh, well, we've got, uh, Peter's got his new interface. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your new piece of gear. Why'd you get it? And what is it? What'd you, why'd yeah, you get so, it? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so literally yesterday I picked it up. So I only just plugged in yesterday. Um, it's the new Apollo Twin X. So I had, previous to this, I had the, you'll see in the photos, um, the silver version, which was the Apollo Twin so this is kind of two generations better than my old version. I'd had the other one for ages. And I'm like, okay, I really want to do an upgrade. Um, the reason why I upgraded was mainly because I'm doing a lot of recording through this thing, especially vocals. So my wife um, is a singer-songwriter. We're always recording her vocals. Um, we just recently, uh, last year, picked up a really good um, mic and so... I wanted the Apollo Twin mainly for the updated um, analog to digital converters. So obviously anything you put into it, it's going to convert better into your um, door. Um, it's got some other cool features like the talkback mic. You don't have to have a separate mic plugged in to talk to your, um, well, in my case, to talk to my wife while she's recording. I can just push a button and I can. it's got a little mic built into it. Um, oh, cool. Huh. But, but yeah, yeah. Um, that's the main feature I wanted. I just wanted upgraded um, digital analog converters and the other way around as well. So 
Yeah, I love this thing. Um, one of the best things about it for live use is it's such a simple feature, but it's um, not all interface have it. It's a little mute button. And what it does is it mutes the output, but it doesn't mute the headphone outs. So mm -hmm. I can be there uh, customizing my template, uh, muck around with my sounds, and I'm not bugging the rest of the band, sending it out to everyone. I can just quickly mute it, plug my headphones in, muck around, do what I need to do inside my template, then push unmute. Um, so that's one little feature I love. Um, such a simple thing, but for live use, it's kind of valuable for me, especially. Um, as What's the back player. of that thing look like? I'm trying to, I want to see like, what, what yeah, are the input options you have? Quarter inches. Oh, okay. There needs to be better, like maybe Sweetwater. Yeah, there should be a photo on there. No, oh, there we go. If you click the arrows, it'll show you the back. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, okay. so combo jacks. Oh, it's got, is that locking Thunderbolt 3? Um, It's got the new Thunderbolt there. 3. I think they're just screws, like Allen key screws holding the thing together, I think. Um, oh, I should oh know but it's right the, uh, <laughs> the power is locking, right? Like if you the, twist the, the power, power jack, is locking, I've never which is really before. cool. Hmm. But then I've, I've always thought, is that smart? <laughs> like... If someone trips over your power lead, it's going to pull your whole uh, unit. Yeah. Not that it always yeah. happens, but it's, I guess it's good to lock it. It could for pull the other end out. I don't know. But... Do you yeah, use true. the optical in? Like, do you have like a lunchbox that you plug in different pre's with? I don't, but I do have um, a couple of classic API pre's, but um, I haven't used the optical in. I wish it had optical out. That's the frustrating thing about this one. Only the apollo 4 the one with the four inputs is oh, the, the one with quad. the two i think it's not even the quad i think the quad talks about the uad software um but like the hardware that runs the software but there's a version that has um instead of two mic inputs it's got four mic inputs and i think that's the only one that has um optical in and out um i was tempted to get it but i didn't want to pay that much more just for um, the extra optical um, out feature. But, yeah, everything else I love about it. Because I don't want, yeah, duck price for <laughs> just the one feature. We got some new gear here here in the yeah. um, studio. We got the Nan light. Here, I'll, I'll get it. This. Oh, oh you did plug it in. Lightsaber. <laughs> yeah. Am I going to hit that? Do some sound effects there. Oh yeah, it's a light. <laughs> it's basically a lightsaber, um, but these are called the Nan Light Pavo Pavo Tube um, RGB LED tube. So they're great in the studio. Like honestly, like we have this on the floor on the wall there. But I kind of like if even you just mount them kind of behind you like this or whatever. Look how it, like does a cool like hair light effect on the oh, video. Yeah. Um, Off screen maybe. Like so, if you guys are looking for some cool stage design ideas, maybe at your church. These are pretty cool. These ones aren't, uh, they're not DMX controllable. So if you want the, the DMX controllable ones, you get the, um, what's the other called? Galax, no, it's Quasar Science. Yeah. Um, at least I'm pretty sure they're not DMX controllable. I've tried to look into it. But it's ideal more for a studio setup. Um, but if you guys, even if you have more kind of controlled environments um, where you're filming, um, uh, you know, worship videos or whatever for online church online stuff. It could look cool. And then look at, so I can control, I mean, there's all sorts of settings on this thing. Uh, so if I change HSI, so now it'll be color. So like I can like scroll through a bunch of colors. So green, there we go. Oh, that's very green. <laughs> um, so I can find a color and then I can also choose like the saturation of it. So let's go to, let's go back to like a purple or something. I'm like blinding myself. Okay. And then, oh, it's because, I think, can I unplug this, you think? Yeah, you yeah, it'll charge. be battery power. And what's cool is they're battery, they're also battery powered. So, oh, there we go. So, here, we're going to have to move you, Peter. All right. <laughs> so, so then we've got, uh, so if I go through here, where'd the little screen go? Is there a screen on that Sith's red. S yep, Sith's. <laughs> You guys, you guys are kind of doing the more analog vibe with the Edison bulbs. Yeah, so here's like you can you can adjust saturation. So now there's no saturation. It's just white. 
and then you can make it blue. Um, and then there was some cool, um, they had like some cool effects. Whoa, it's just like. That's just like, yeah. It like changes colors, right? Yeah, now it's changing colors. It can flash. I think there's like a cop car setting on it too. Yeah. Wee -woo -wee -woo. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. So I, I like this. I mean, for for YouTubing and stuff, it's it's really awesome. But I think in a church, like stage design, studio design, it could be great. Now I have to remember how to bring it back to something more tolerable here. Okay. Ugh, I'll put it back. Well, do you have any, like, do you ever do LED stuff on your keys rigs, Peter? Like, so you can see the keyboards or, like, put stage tape on the <laughs> keys? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, we used to have little um uh little battery powered lights that would set up for our keys and um pedal boards and everything because obviously uh when we're touring you go to black all the time, you're like, ah oh, crap, I can't see my pedal board or I can't see what's what's going on. So yeah, we, we do use like little things like that to help us out. Nice. Yeah. I can't remember what with, model or whatever they were, but yeah. I've seen people could put like um just like an LED strip right above their key bed so they can see their key bed. Yeah, nice. But cool. That's a good idea. I mean so we talked about the twin, talked about the lights. We're doing a complete tech booth remodel here at the at South Fellowship Church. Well, we'll make a video. You guys just watch the YouTube video about it. I forgot we shot that video yesterday, which yeah. talks a lot about it. So be on the lookout for that. And then also I was like installing the Mac minis and stuff today or one of them. Got to do that. Finish doing that after this. If I have the Family. brain power and energy to do it. So, um, yeah. What time is it there right now? Um, it's 20 to 10. So nine forty one. Basically, in the morning, not the exact right. time. <laughs> in the morning, tomorrow, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we originally we uh, for you guys listening, we were like usually do the church front show uh, in the morning our time. It's like three o'clock, three thirty right now, and it was like it would have been like three a.m. Uh, oh. Peter's time. So <laughs> not me. not ideal. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Which you put these other ones here, Adam? Which one? Yeah. Which one? Uh, Stands out to you because we're about coming up towards the, the end of the show, but I think we got time yeah. for one more. Um, I don't know these UE these these UE fit things seem kind of interesting to me. Yeah, the headphones. Um, huh. I don't know if you've heard of these, but um, are they for? No, they're I supposed haven't. to be are these supposed to be like an AirPod. These are AirPod Pro. Yeah, rivals or whatever. Yeah. Or, um, competitor. Wow, I got yeah. audio. 249 bucks. Unfortunately, you can't really use them for live sound because they're Bluetooth. No, um, but uh, this this is what I thought was interesting. Like, you get them, they come like soft mold, and then you use their app, and then you let it mold to your ear, yep. and then it stays hard. Yep. Oh, interesting. And that's what that's cool. they, they yeah. use that same technology for some of their custom ears. Like, they have this home... They have this like home fit kit thing. Uh, Chipper did it with his. I tried it. It didn't really like when I got my custom ears from them. It just it didn't fit. They were too big. Part of it was like I just I might have not gone through the process of fitting them well with the app and stuff. But it's impressive. I mean, I think obviously it sounds like a lot of people are getting great results with it. But um, yeah, actually, there's a fit kit. Um, do you see it on the page? I'm looking at it on their website there. On I think I went to. Their homepage. Go just go to the homepage, and then scroll down. You'll see like a, I think a instant fit, a custom made. That's a, that's the one. So it's the same idea. They're like, let's take this fit kit idea, but make Bluetooth headphones that kind of do the same thing. I think if you scroll like down to the bottom, you'll see the right there. So oh, yeah, yeah. that's that's the fit kit that they sent us. Okay. To yeah. get. To so get our ears. This is like you do it yourself and send it back and they make a Yeah, mold. instead of going to audiologist and, yeah. and getting Got molding. It. Yeah. yeah, it's like this home, at home, custom but moldings. Whereas, so. whereas this one is where you just, yeah, it comes and then you just keep them. You don't have to wait for that to be sent back and come back. 
Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Lots of cool new stuff, guys. So, um, Peter, I just want to thank you, man, for making time to to come on the show today. Well, this morning for you, this afternoon for us. Um, I know you said you're you're more of an evening guy. I'm more of a morning guy, so this is like exhausting for yeah. both of us probably. But it's been <laughs> Sorry fun. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's good. It's been fun, and um, it's it's cool to see all the resources. We're gonna link everything we talked about. Well, really, the, your multi tracks page below this video, so you guys can check out patches, sure. templates, anything else uh, you want to. Let people know where they can like follow you and keep up with you. Um, yeah, just the the usual, like the Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'm on Instagram probably more than Facebook, so if you're going to follow one, um, Instagram is probably the one to to do. But yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Good chats. Yep. Thanks so much, Peter. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> keep up the great work in your ministry, and we'll see you next time. Cool. Awesome.